It's James Bayfield, America, someone short said that negotiator. Listen, I'm doing a video for my friend Jose Sanchez. He got some paperwork and a lawsuit. He's currently have a landlord tenant action going in Queens. You also have a, 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 a civil uh, complaint that's happening in, um, in civil court here in Queens as well. This video is for educational purpose only. Um, I'm not an attorney. I'm not giving you legal advice. Please be advised. Should you need legal services, legal advice, provide, uh, seek an attorney, a licensed professional to assist you with this. This is just education based on my uh, paralegal education and training. So uh, if you're watching this video, take notes. Uh, learn. This is supposed to be a quick, quick video, not super, super detailed, but just to get you to understand how this process works. Um, even though uh, my friend um, Jose is kind of having have a, a landlord tenant issue, we're not going to discuss the landlord tenant issues. We're going to discuss this document right here, which is a, a civil court complaint uh, where um, his landlord. I'm not going to name the landlord for. Um, uh, uh, suing him for $17,100 but this whole uh, action started from a uh, dispute in housing court. The landlord is basically saying that uh, he has he's breached, he's breached the contract uh, which means that they, which means they have a contract for X amount of money and um, which I'm assuming started from, from a, a lease a lease a lease, con a lease I'm going to write a word lease on the board because that's going to be the contract and uh, the cause of action, which was stand for COA cause of action, is, is really um, it's it's going for breach of contract, breach of contract, and um, this this is for for the landlord for this guy to win his case, he has to prove that they have they had a valid contract and uh, there was consideration exchange. They got to meet the they have to meet the elements. We call these the elements, elements of, uh, for, for the breach. So what the landlord chose to do is, um, you know what, take them to um, housing court. I mean, take them to landlord, a, a civil court so they could, they could get a, a default judgment, some kind of judgment, so they could they could do enforcement, which means enforcement consists of wage garnishment, wage garnishment, and other um, provision by law. By law. All right. Um, um, you got. You have to look at the CPLR. I don't have. I don't have a one here at this moment, and I'll just show you. But um, there's a, there's a whole chapter on uh, how to enforce a ju uh, a judgment once it's been awarded. But anyway, this first thing happened in the process is this that he would serve a summon and complaint. Right. This is called a summon. This is. The first page is, is called summon. It's a you're here by summon. It's a one-page document. It's called a summon, right? And they um, summon. This is the first thing that needs to happen. It basically says you're here by you have to appear in civil court uh, in a certain time frame. And this right here was back in March. This, this is a long time, right? And um, now I think, but this, now this is dated December third. So, so you just recently received this. And what we, um, that's, what, that's what the uh, the plaintiff in this case, which I'm not going to rename, name, uh, allege, uh, happens. So, so first you have the first page, which is a summons. All right. The second page is a verified complaint. Verified complaint. Complaint. That's why it's called summons and complaint. It's a verified complaint, meaning that uh, the 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 plaintiff has certified this document is true. And they put their name at stake and they believe it's official. And uh, the and also the, the uh, plaintiff is also doing a lawsuit with a law firm. So which means the plaintiff is paying money for this. A law firm, I wish I would not name, out here in Queens, Astoria Queens, and to do this law, to do this case. So this means they're going to become an aggressive, real cocky, real arrogant against this gentleman, Jose, for this 17 grand because they want this default because he wants to win his judgment and he's feeling he since this guy is also have an attorney he's gonna have the upper hand he's gonna know he's not gonna know the law he's not gonna know his rights he's not gonna know his, his, what's, what's to do or not to do so he's gonna have an easy victory I love he know <laughs> oh, they was smart to go get to find myself a paralegal to, to give some basic education again this is just education folks all right so now they have now yes you have the summons 
right? You have the verify complaint. So we're gonna go, we go through we go through this complaint and the first uh, the complaint the first part um, uh, in drafting the complaint you have the you have the what we call the caption which is a part of the cap, uh, top of the complaint which is um, you know uh, civil court of the city of New York county of Queens then you have the uh, the preambles which is basically um, you know this the top layer right here the people call it the preamble and, and then it talk about party and jurisdiction. Basically, that's the first part. Make sure that they have jurisdiction to discuss this because since it, since the lawsuit is, is under twenty twenty five thousand dollars, so it's it's in the right jurisdiction, civil court. All right. Then you have um, as for the first cause of action for breach of contract, just like I mentioned before. I even read this paperwork, I know it was about a breach of contract. So this is the this is the allegations that, uh, they make it. Another word for this paperwork is called pleadings. We call these things pleadings. And that's everything he wants, he has to plead in his document because if he doesn't plead in his document, and when it's time for trial, and his case can be get dismissed, dismissed. So this is pleading. He got one card for uh, for breach of contract, which is a lot of lines here, a lot of lines. He got seventeen. He got and for the second cause of action, it's called an unjust enrichment and quantum merit. So this this is unjust enrichment. Basically, he's saying that he's making an allegation that um, that Jose has what you call an unjust enrichment. Basically, benefited for something. We don't know what it is. So Jose got to know what it is. You got to read to the complaint. That's so it's, she's they're making allegations of more than what Jose probably believe. So we're gonna read this, find out what it's about. All right. So this is the second cause of action. Then you also have a third cause of action for attorney fees and costs and expense. See now. Attorney, key, attorney fees for costs. If the contract didn't call for for uh, the uh, the losing party to pay attorney fees, that's, they're never gonna get the money. But they still plead it anyway. So the attorney is trying to get paid as well. Uh, and for uh, as, and as for a third cause of action for attorney fees and costs. So they want, the attorney wants to get paid. All right. But again, if the contract doesn't provide for attorney fees. It's a waste of time, so it's not gonna happen. No, uh, you know, you know, it's not gonna happen. And that's it. So they have three causes of actions, and this is the individual verification. This is a document that she verified, saying that this is truth to knowledge. You know, she had firsthand knowledge of this, of this situation that uh, her attorney made her sign. I guarantee the client have no doesn't understand the ramifications of this um, the document she signed. All right, and this right is called a back cover page. The back cover page basically say what it is. Some in complaint. And uh, the attorney information, and this is like uh, pursuant to New York Code uh, Regulation 130. This, this actually is not frivolous, all right? But okay, this is this. So this is the makeup. This is the makeup. Summons and complaint, verify complaint. Now what up? Now Jose options are, are this. He could do two things. He could uh, he could do two things. He could do one. He could file a motion to dismiss, a motion to dismiss the action for uh, for different grounds. We got different grounds like lack of lack of subject, uh, subject jurisdiction, lack of personal jurisdiction, lack of lack of personal personal jurisdiction, meaning that he wasn't served properly. And talking to Jose uh, earlier, uh, the statute have a, a CPLR a statute CPLR three or eight, which define how someone should be served. As I said, so to, to verify that, it's, he needs to get a copy of the affidavit of service. That they file at the court, they file the search or what they have to see what to to, re, to review what we call the method of service. If they didn't follow the to uh, to if they didn't follow the structure the statute to a T, which is a strict guideline, it says exactly how to how to serve someone. He could file a motion to dismiss his action for lack subject matter uh, lack of personal jurisdiction, meaning that they don't have jurisdiction over him. The court doesn't have the power to make a judgment against him. All right, he could do that. Then that what that does that stall the process until until that that emotion is is heard. What what happened is that um, nothing can be moved forward, and that's like that's like how you, that's like a stall the process. Um, you know, he was never he wasn't served properly. And now he said that um, they did mail a copy, but mailing is not. A, uh, you gotta read every element. You gotta go to his book CPLR three hundred eight. That's a struct. That's a statutes. Uh, that's a civil practice rule and law. 
that's a statute that's get, get a strict guideline that tell you what to do. You could Google this, read it, make sure that was that's what happens to uh, according to with the affidavit. The affidavit must match this. If it doesn't if it doesn't match uh, appropriately, this case should be dismissed or will be dismissed. But you have to allege this on your paper. If you don't allege this on your paper, then and you cannot you cannot raise the issue. All right. So everything has to be marked in paper for the record. That's that. So that's the first thing you could do. The second thing you could do, you could also um, make an allegation said uh, this case lack subject matter jurisdiction. How, uh, wh why is that? Well, he could he could claim that I don't owe seventeen thousand dollars. I only owe five thousand dollars. So that means now this now they don't have jurisdiction in civil court. And they, they need to go to small claim court. So that, that's a, not a defense he can raise. So he has a lot of options. He's got to think creatively. And so kick that, 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 that would also kick it out of that court. Kick it out of the court, they'd have to start all over again. Now what happened? Now the lawyer's getting frustrated because he's a professional. He cannot be making those type of mistakes. Now, he's supposed to verify all these facts before he even gets started. So he's getting frustrated. But in the meantime, now this person who started a lawsuit, the plaintiff, has to pay his attorney fees like $275 per hour. Or he might just pay the guy a flat fee. We don't know what happened. They, everybody got a different relationship. If it's, a, if it's a flat fee attorney, he's going to try to do everything in his power to get out of that case because he don't want to spend all his time doing a lot of litigation back and forth. If it's a, a per hour attorney, then he's going to be billing his client. His client's not going to uh, not want to pay the amount of money. Especially now that Jose got a friend that knows this stuff that uh, that could have educated him about his, his rights. This is just education. Jose is going to proceed pro se. Pro se means he said represent himself. He done read the books. He studied a book on the, on the sixth floor. Every uh, law, uh, courthouse, uh, Supreme Courthouse, is um, there's law books for you to research any topic you wish to research, and uh, so you, so you can know your rights. Everybody should know their rights. You shouldn't let any people just walk on you and take advantage on a, on a technical basis. And people do it all day long. It happens because people don't understand. Anyway, the, the reason behind this video is because uh, Jose he's a, is the inspiration behind it, and um, and uh, he just happened to catch me on a Saturday when I'm not so busy. This is what I'm getting, informing you of your options. All right, again, file a file motion to dismiss the action for lack of personal jurisdiction, for lack of subject matter jurisdiction, because the, because for civil court, it has, it has to be a um, specific amount. And I, I can't call it on top of my head. I don't know if it's 10000 or 25000 but the, whatever the amount of money you, have, you request, it has to be that specific. And also, uh, there's, other, there's other defenses he has. Uh, uh, now... If you, after making all this motion to dismiss on this this the ground, let's say that the, the court ruled against you, what you can do, the next thing you, got, you have to do, you have to file an answer. You have to file an answer. You have to file an answer. And your answer, you're going to have uh, you're gonna have your regular answer. You're going to deny, admit, all right, or, or DKI, deny knowledge informa or information. If you don't have to, if you don't know, if, you, if you're not sure, just write DKI, um, deny knowledge information. Enough to, 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 to give you uh, exact information. You can just deny. If, if, they, uh, if I'm reading this uh, complaint, if there's one, if one part of the complaint is wrong, the whole, uh, of the line, the whole line is wrong. Just deny the whole damn thing. Because if they say you live in Mexico Street, but it is also, you also owe $20, you know you only owe $30, so deny the whole thing. Because it can't be, the line has to be either uh, strong by itself or not strong at all. Make sense? It's very important. And two, you need to have what you call affirmative defenses. The affirmative defense is, I don't owe this money. The affirmative defense is, I don't, I don't owe this money. I don't, and, or, and, uh, but whatever def affirmative defense you, you plead on your papers, you have to be able to back it up. You have to prove, in trial, you have to prove your affirmative defenses. If you say it wasn't me, or prove it wasn't you, how do you prove it wasn't you? You can use a copy of ID, you can say I don't live there. You can say I never signed this contract. This is not my signature. You got to prove whatever you have, have allegations you make in your federal defenses. And the third option, you can turn back and sue the landlord. Sue this person that's suing you. It's called, it's called a counterclaim. You can have a counterclaim. Counterclaim means that I'm suing. Now, now, you're suing me, I'm suing you. You're suing for 17 grand, I'm suing you for 100 grand. You're suing for a bigger number. And that, that actually puts some scared on them, and they, they go away. I'm suing you for, uh, for deceptive trade practices. You're crook, you're criminal, you, uh, uh, I'm assuming you're liable, libel. I slander, you slander my name, personal injury my, my name, 
and I'm in this public record, and I and I never done anything to you. I'm suing you for that. So now you damaged me. I cannot go get a job. Uh, you ruined my credit. You know now you, you have to come up with your own defense. Now you prove all every element you're gonna sue him for. You gotta prove that as well. So you guys, you just gotta go back and think about op, what are your options are, so you can create leverage. So by creating leverage, now make the parties want to sit down, do which what we call a stipulation, settlement, a settlement, saying, "Hey man, we apologize for this. Are we?" We didn't realize or we, we were damaging your name. We didn't realize that's what we were doing. Um, let's talk it out. You know, you owe me 17, just give me five grand. We'll call it eight. And he's like, nah, you owe me 100 grand. I want 100 grand because you damaged my name. You injured me. I can't get a job. Everywhere I go, they put my credit. It's, it's damaged. And you, you shouldn't have done that. I had no contract with you. I never signed a lease. And that was, you know, that was my cousin house. You know, and now you've taken this place. Now you're going to have to pay. So you flip the script on them. And then, and that's that's how you create leverage. So that's basically the concept of a lawsuit. It's what you should be doing, and to protect yourself, to defend yourself. So you, um, there's a lot more detail. You, uh, you can take a class at Queens College, Hostel uh, Paralegal Program, Nassau Community College. They have a nice little paralegal program so people can understand civil litigation. If you get sued for a small claim court, civil court, housing court. Supreme Court, the Appellate Division, and District Court. You need to understand the, uh, what are your options. Let's say, for instance, he, go to, he goes to trial and, and he loses trial. He could always appeal the case. Um, I think it's CPLR 55 and change, 5516. You pay an uh, appeal for case and uh, get a copy of the transcript and uh, you know, put his appeal together and, um, and, and challenge that on that. So he has, he has some options. So you don't, now that he understand what he got to do. Uh, what you can do, you, now you, if you understand the mechanic, get those high, higher paralegal to draft your documents. Uh, that documents and put it on a record. Always put it on a record. Don't argue orally at court. That's the biggest mistake people can make. Put, type it up, put it on a record, and so when you do have an appeal, so the, when you go to the appellate court, appellate court can help you if, the, if it's just an oral, oral argument. The appellate court can help you if, it's, if, it's, if you quote statutes, you quote law, and and the judge ignore the law, then they can, then they they'll force the judge to enforce the law. So if you if like, let's say CPLR three hundred eight, that's law. Like you said um uh, CPLR fifty fifteen, uh, the judgment issue, that's law. So that can they, if if you feel that was not done accurately, like let's say um CPLR forty five eighteen, which is have to do with documentary, documentation, and um, evidence stuff, then the guy didn't sh during trial. And to discovery, he never produced an original contract. He has to produce an original contract. So how is he going to prove an original contract? So, I mean, you have to provide an original citizen. Not a time you don't have one. So if you don't have one, there's no, there's no case. So, but he doesn't know. Who doesn't know that, that, that you know, he have to discovery. You win your case to discovery. Now, he doesn't have the original contract. That's what his lease thing. So... He doesn't have the original contract. Now I tell you, he doesn't have it because he didn't file it. He didn't anticipate having all these issues. He's just being greedy. And listen, you evict the guy, move on. Go about with your life. Leave the guy alone. But he wants to be greedy because he wants to collect, enforce that money because now he's going to learn it's going to cost him more money just to collect that money. Sometimes it went in and just let the guy go because you got to play the whole thing out. All right? And that's what, that's what, that's what, he's not, that's what this person's not being advised, of, you know, correctly. I would recommend and move on. You're a landlord, you got your place back, move on with your life. You know what I'm saying? Rent it to someone else and take it as a loss. But now you're you litigation back and forth, you're in court back and forth. Every two weeks, this guy putting papers on you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, 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 he with the paper in your booty production. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Motion after motion, discovery orders, and he wanted to depose you. He have, they may have a lot of recourse. You have a lot of recourse, and um, the, the lawyers get, will get tired of reading all those case laws. Got, it's just it's a lot of work. And uh, the guy that I know that's helping uh, Jose, he's a paralegal. He's, he's, big, he's, a, he's big in case laws. He's big on statute. And plus, yeah, he required to have a business uh, license, and there's no, I don't think she have a license to be collecting money. So that's CPLR uh, 3015, it's so paragraph E. And then, then you have another issue. You gotta be incorporated. I'm like, listen, let's look at the Department of Corporation insurance. There's a lot, of, there's a lot of issues that's gonna be raised, and she's not gonna really prove any of that. The attorney gonna be like, I, I, I'm a client. I, I, I'm a client. I, I. No, case is dismissed. Not gonna go nowhere. Another thing, and these lawyers use intimidation tactics. Like the judge, not the judge is not in their pocket. The judge have to follow the law. 
They don't want to lose their job. So this case, this case is a dead case in my opinion. You know, it's not going nowhere. It's going down to discovery. But yeah, if he, uh, this, I, this again, this video was inspired by my friend Jose, who, you know, who got received some paper from, from a, an aggressive landlord who wants to enforce some money, a money judgment, and against him, and um, he felt that it's unfair, and he just want to know what, what his options was, are, and um, I'm a paralegal, but I'm really a real estate developer. Uh, the reason I became a paralegal because I was a victim, and uh, my friends are victims, and uh, we, we didn't know the law. People took advantage of us, and ruined us. And um, now we just share for to the public and whoever needs to hear that information. So this right if you're watching on YouTube, you see this video on my website, jamesbayford.com. It's cursing my man Jose Sanchez. Que paso, me paso, me lo vi tu paqui. Whatever that means. I don't know what it means. I just made up some stuff. And uh, peace out. <laughs>